Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, the armor wizard, zap zap. And we have a body armor demo today, a long time coming. RMA, I do believe, released this plate over a year ago and I'm just finally getting my dirty stinking paws on it. Now, in full transparency, I have an existing relationship with RMA for quite some time. I usually beg Corey, the customer service specialist for different types of plates. Normally he says no, and whatever they have scheming in the background, I am not privy to, but we got our hands on the new 1165. Let's take a look at this guy and see what we're gonna do today. The 1165 is a level four offering. It is their lightweight budget option. The 1155 is the original NIJ certified model that lost its certification here this last year. And now with the upcoming NIJ 07, I know RMA has stated that a lot of their plates will be submitted for CPL under the new 07 standard. This particular 10 by 12 plate weighs 6.965 pounds based on my scale or 3.16 kilograms. This particular model, I measured a 868 thousandths thick or 21.05 millimeters. This one over here was 21.34 or 840 thousandths. It all depends on where you measure on the plate. It is multi-curve. You can see all those nice sexy curves. We have a curve here and a curve right here. Very, very comfort fitting depending on your body type over a single curve or no curve at all. Now, if this is the first time you're viewing my YouTube channel, Channel, we do all of our body armor demos completely different than everyone else on YouTube. We're after worst case scenario because at the end of the day, if I shoot M2 armor piercing at 2,900 feet per second and that plate stops it, you know in the real world someone shooting you with a 24 inch 1903 at 75 to 100 yards, your plate will stop that threat and you will go on living. You may be hurting, but you'll go on living. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet. We also shoot at zero degrees again because that represents worst case scenario. We use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay from Chavant that acts as our compressible media to put the body armor up against and it's like 85 pounds and it keeps the body armor from flying about the range. Again, maximum energy transfer and maximum worst case scenario. Now, it's the same clay that NIJ uses but they heat that thing up to 100 degrees. They're inside so they can control that temperature. They drop a ball on it and they measure the, dim the dimple to certify it. Uh, I'm out here in the woods. It's about 75 to 80 degrees outside today. We're here with Deacon doing some shooting. So it's just going to be a representation of what back face could be. If we see something like 60 millimeters in my clay with one of the NIJ threats, that possibly could be failing. Since this employs a ceramic strike face per the NIJ, we've gone ahead and dropped one of the plates on its face two times as a preconditioning test. RMA sent these plates over in full transparency for me to test with the only string attached being that I only drop test one of these plates. Why? I don't know. It does not have drop face foam on it. After we've performed that drop test, we apply a torque test on the opposing corners of the plates to listen for any cracks. Now, because they don't have that strike face foam on there, you see that we marked this plate with a C, meaning that I hear cracking on this plate. We use a chronograph whenever possible because we need to capture the velocity of that bullet the NIJ spec for level four or upcoming RF3 is M2 armor piercing at 2880 feet per second plus or minus 30. Typically in my testing in the past from our 1903 or any other 24 inch barrel at my elevation, we see anywhere from 2500 to 2780 feet per second out of our 24 inch barrel 30 out six. So I've gone ahead and loaded those loads in our 300 wind mag so that we can meet or exceed that velocity. We put a spreadsheet here at the beginning and the end that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. We mark our penetrations and our velocities. And at the end, we do a tear down to confirm what the inside of our plate looks like. RMA advertises this as having a complete edge to edge strike face, meaning that for this given 10 by 12 size, which I did measure at 10 by 12, ceramic will extend almost all the way out to the extreme edges here. Other companies will sell you a lighter plate because they have a foam ring of one inch or more on the entire border. So ceramic may only extend out to here. The NIJ won't shoot any closer than two to three inches from the edge. So it's kind of one of those gray areas. I do want to remind everyone that I am not an NIJ lab. So if you see a threat stopped or penetrates over here, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited 
and recent lab results with those particular threats. And on the flip side, if you're the manufacturer and you see me stop M80A1 going 3,500 feet per second against your plate, you should send that off to an accredited lab and have that added as a special rifle threat to your panel. All right, plate number one is strapped in and ready to go. Again, plate number one was the only plate that we drop tested for this test. It is cracked. I do know from looking at other YouTubers testing videos that the 1165 strike face is laminated. The backing material has been upgraded to ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. That's why we're seeing a weight savings over the 1155. Since this is level four, we're gonna start out right with the NIJ level four threat, and that is M2 armor piercing. It is a 163 to 165 grain full metal jacket, steel core round, hardened steel, tool steel penetrator. Now, I mentioned that the velocity spec is 2880 feet per second. My son Deacon is out shooting today, so he wanted to see what the velocity of M2 ar armor piercing would be in its native form. So we have a 24 inch 1903 A3 Springfield that he is going to take a shot center of mass on. Velocity on mine was 2598. Interesting, that is quite the discrepancy. All right, we brought out a newcomer. This is from Bear Creek Arsenal. This is their BC-8, a semi-automatic 300 wind mag. Wowzers, Batman. Now that is the definition of 300 wind chad. We're gonna evaluate this over some of the established loads that we have in our bolt gun and see how this stacks up. It has a five round box magazine. Very nice little setup here, velocity trigger in there. As I mentioned, we're gonna shoot three rounds of M2 armor piercing at it. Now, because this has a gas system versus a bolt gun, we're gonna see what kind of velocity we are going to get out of this. 2875, not sure what the chrono read. 2866 from the Garmin. 2872, nice. All right, easy enough. Shots number one with the surplus, good shooting Deacon right in that star. And then my shots, one, two, and three. There seems to be a little bit of discrepancy between the velocity that the light screen chronograph is getting versus what the Garmin Zero is. So if one is under spec and the other one the over spec, we'll just have to split the difference. Helper hand, place those bets, come below. Ho! Ruh oh, Raggy. We have one pass through on that last shot down there in the corner. It looks like we've pulled the polyethylene away from the ceramic strike face, but the other three shots stopped. Pretty darn amazing. Now, as far as back face goes, this first shot here, 18 millimeters. The second one up here, ooh, 50 millimeters. Now the clay, clay is pretty darn warm. This shot up here, 43 millimeters. So that first shot there, right in line with specification. And again, we're well above and beyond with the amount of hits on this plate, but it's holding up pretty well. I say we're gonna finish this off with some 5.56 threats and see how it handles some multi-hit capability. Time to finish off plate number one with some multi-hit capability check. This is our 22 inch TC compass. So this is close to, you know, maximum real world value that you'll see velocity wise in 5.56 NATO. Now we have some of these loads for plate number two and 22 Creedmoor, but we have M193. That's our 55 grain full metal jacket known for popping steel armor. Polyethylene can stop it. We have M855. That is a 62 grain penetrator lead core with a conical steel tip inside. It is hardened steel, 49 to like 54 RHC. Then we have the US Army's current ball round all the way down to basic. This is M855A1 or EPR, enhanced performance round. This has a copper slug and a larger and harder steel arrowhead tip, right around 60 on the C scale. 3391 is what the Garmin said. 3446. 3236 is what this guy said. Two. Three. 
Well, folks, I think we're a little mean to this plate and took it well beyond its limits. As mentioned, they're using alumina for the strike face. That's our white ceramic. It looks like it's laminated, but the lamination could use some work because in my prior testing with some other laminated plates, the strike face hasn't come apart like this, but we did take some more extreme edge shots with this. So our shots of M193, number one and two, three, and then four right there. Then our M855, number one and two. Then our A1, one, two, three, and then four right there. Place those bets in the comments below. Oh, Raggy. We had the one penetration from that last shot of M855A1. Now, you'll see some other videos online of people shooting ceramic armor in a close concentration like that and then saying it, it causes penetrations. Well, of course it does because once you destroy the ceramic layer that's meant to break up these bullets, you're relying on your backing material to stop those rounds. And usually polyethylene, when it's pressed, can stop quite a few hits of, say, M193, but there's only so much that it can do before it fails. Again, that's why the NIJ places shots two inches from each other, and there's a bunch of other protocols for testing. Now, that doesn't really translate to real world because if someone were to shoot an adversary center of mass, you're going to shoot as many shots as you can in one area. But rather impressive from this plate. We'll get this torn down and confirm that we don't have any other penetrations on this plate. Plate number two is ready to go, and we're gonna shoot one more 5.56 thread at it. Effectively, this is gonna cost me $150 for this shot, but this is M995 armor piercing. This is the US Army's armor piercing round in 5.56 NATO. It is 52 grains with a tungsten core penetrator. Very, very nasty, but generally in the past, when I've shot it against Illumina Strike Face level four, it has stopped it. We brought out the 22 inch again, and Deacon will be shooting the shot center of mass. Did not get a velocity reading off the light screen chronograph. What did the zero say, Deacon? 3,450 feet per second, nice. Now we've brought out our 300 Winchad loads. These are military loadings that we've loaded to 300 Winchester Magnum specs. We've got our M80A1, that is the enhanced performance round version of M80. It's got a hardened steel penetrating tip, just like M855A1, but it's only around 49 to 50 RHC. Then we have M14, A1 API. It's an older armor piercing incendiary from 30-06 has a very nice shaped penetrator in it, very similar to M993, but it's only steel core. It has a lot of incendiary compound. 3525. By where it says armor. 3301. So much fire, so satisfying. 3 more hits for plate number 2. We're going to shoot some M80 ball at this. This is just Winchester surplus. Now, I have checked to ensure that this does have a bimetal jacket, meaning that there is steel over or under our copper cladding and it will attract a magnet. So in theory, it should be a little more robust than an all copper jacket. We've got the 24 inch Savage 110 tactical. So we should see a right around 3000 feet per second. Our friend, Mr. Deacon will be doing the shooting. 2948. 2908. I believe all these shots are considered fair hits. I would say Constructive criticism wise, RMA needs to do a better job at this laminating layer and then laminating that strike face to the backer because the plate is coming apart. But on the flip side, I'm shooting 300 Win Mag at this plate. So our M995 was right here, center of mass. Then our M80 A1 plus B plus was right there. Our M14 A1 plus B plus was right down here. Deacon's shot of M80, number one, two, and then three. Helper hand. Hey, no pass through folks, impressive. Now we're seeing a little more localized back face here because we are degrading the plate. If I had to 
give a fair assessment of a shot. That's probably the fairest one right there. And 57 millimeters. This A1 shot down here though, so that's the third shot on the plate. That's only about 21 millimeters. That's pretty darn impressive for a 3,300 foot per second shot. And then we're just starting to break the plate after that. We'll feel for any hard spots left on here, but I think we probably should call it. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery, paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Now for a fan favorite, the teardown. That's where we get to look at the guts of this plate and see how well it did. Here is plate number two confirmed. There are no penetrations on this plate. I decided to call it though because the plate strike face was degrading. We have some Dyneema, ooh, fancy HB24. You know, that's legit because it's got a lot number and everything on there, cool. I measured that right around 330 thousandths thick. It is pressed. You can see that those layers have not started to necessarily come apart like a book. I have seen better pressing, but it does retain its shape and its rig rigidity, if I said that right. There was our shot of M995. There was our M80 ball shot. Put quite a hampering on that Dyneema. Here is our Strike Face Illumina. Measured that right around 403,000 thick, not the leaves there. We do have an edge protectant foam. That's a good thing. Here is our laminated strike face, but the backside isn't laminated. So that's why it came apart so easily, folks, is that I feel that if you're going to laminate a strike face, do it on both sides like they did on the 1092. Tacticons Level 4 that I reviewed had a very, very robust laminating layer. Again, that's going to cost more money. Could drive the cost of the plate up. But if you want a true multi-hit capability, lamination is a must. As you can see there, there is no strike face foam on there. Could be debated whether you want it or not with that laminating layer but I would take the hit on the increased thickness and the minuscule amount of weight that foam will give you to add that foam. On to plate number one. Our only penetrations was that final shot of M855A1, then that shot of M2 armor piercing down there. It really had to work to get through there. Again, you can see our drop edge protectant foam on there that's a good thing there is the front we are still retaining our shape with this this one got a little soft and i can start to thumb through it a little bit but overall i would say this is a fairly impressive plate a definite upgrade over the 1155 if they do have this cpl listed this will be a pretty hard plate to beat in its price range I feel that RMA should offer another upscale from this that would offer more lamination and more foam and give us a better multi-hit capable plate. And that's all she had to write, folks. Well, everyone, I would say our RMA 1165 went above and beyond. We stopped almost four rounds of M2 armor piercing on that first plate, as well as stopping M995, our M80A1 plus P plus, as well as our M14A1 API. In retrospect, our NIJ level four only has to stop that one round of M2 armor piercing center of mass. It does not include lesser threats in the threat specifications. If you see any other threats listed on that, that means that the manufacturer has had a lab special rifle threat test those. It often gets thrown around that our ceramic plates can't stop edge shots and we stop that M193 almost at the complete edge of our plate right there. It wasn't until we degraded the strike face enough that that last shot of M855A1 went through. In terms of build quality, as I mentioned in the teardown, I feel that this is a step in the right direction. Better than the 1155, it is lighter than the 1155, so that is a big plus. Switching to our ultra high molecular weight polyethylene helps us stop threats that don't fully get degraded going through that strike face, but we will take a negative hit on our back face compared to our e-glass and other style backing materials. I do like that RMA is laminating the strike face, but they really should laminate the front and the back of it 
so they can sandwich all that ceramic together and keep it together as long as possible. I also would like to see them add a drop face foam protectant on there, although that first plate, we did drop it. It cracked, but it held those M2 armor piercings like a champ. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here because I'm getting hungry. I think I'm going to have Mediterranean for dinner. I do love me some yellow rice. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them. Number one is my family. Deacon was out here doing some shooting with me today. He actually got to practice a lot on the 1903 to make that shot count. He did a great job. If anything, like and subscribe because Deacon's doing a great job learning how to shoot. Number two is my Patreon subscribe star and YouTube channel memberships. I have a campsite link in the description below. It is a landing page just like everyone else influencer wise that has and a lot of those are either discount codes or affiliate tracking links and they earn me a sales commission if you decide to buy something i do have one to rma it is buffman and it saves you 10 percent depending on what kind of sales they're running and i forget what the kickback is but it's like i think five percent and what i do with all that money is i buy more armor piercing rounds those m2 ap's are like four dollars a shot some of those other rounds can be upwards of six to ten and the m995 like i said i can only buy that from collectors and that's 100 to 125 dollars a shot even the nij lab pays those insane amount of prices for those round so any help that i can get is greatly appreciated number three are the fine gentlemen over at rma blake and corey sent me those plates to destroy with no strings attached except that i could only drop the one plate on his face two times and of course number four is you all for watching until next time i'll catch you at the range